Grace Martinez. Uh, for the audience, the microphone does not amplify, but it does record, so we'd appreciate it if you could speak into the microphone. Hi, my name is Grace Martinez. Um, I'm an organizer with San Francisco ACE, um, and I work with a lot of members who are actually facing foreclosure. A lot of them, a lot of them are San Francisco employees, city employees, and many of them are retired. Um, I'm here to just, you know, many of us have made multiple attempts in the last three months to actually pass resolution that would pretty much show the impact of, you know, the current investments that SPURS has in particular banking institutions and how that actually might comp um, be a conflict of interest with the social, I think, socially responsible investment policy um, within the SPURS guidelines. And just so that I can give a little more context through the banks that we're focused on um, that SPURS has investment in is Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Wells Fargo. And just to give more context about what exa why we're calling it, um, probably a conflict of interest when it comes to socially responsible. In um, For Bank of America, they received a total of $230 billion in bailout, and in one year, they received $4 billion in profit. J.P. Morgan Chase, um, their total amount of bailout was $100.7 billion, and in uh, between 2009 and 2010, they received $29.1 billion in profit. Wells Fargo, um, received 47, $43.7 billion in bailout money, and they res um, and it, between 2009 and 2010, their total profit was $24.6 billion. So in, in light of this crisis and many people losing their homes, how can a business or an institution that is supposed to be responsible continue to make profit when the majority of Americans have lost their homes and lost their jobs? I think that's number one. Number two, many of these banks, and um, many of you might remember Bill Ting's assessor report um, several years ago where they did a sampling of foreclosures between the time of 2009 and 2011, and they found that 80, what is it, 84% of the foreclosures that occurred in that time to be illegal, meaning that they had violated several civil violations. Um, in San Francisco, California, we don't have the ability to go through a foreclosure through court, and so many of this has gone through civil court and people have lost. 0.03% of lawsuits have been able to win. Recently, I don't know if you saw this, but there was a person in LA, an older man, who lost his home to Wells Fargo because of a typo that just died of a heart attack. He was a senior. I think that there are, you know, the impact of this isn't just financial, but it's also emotional and social. We have several people here today who will actually be speaking to that point, and this isn't just a, a financial issue, but I can also provide you numbers of the total cost of loss of property value, the loss um, to the city in terms of money, and also the total number of foreclosures that are, have occurred in San Francisco between the, um, between the years of 2008 to 2012, which is about 12,000, over 12,000, um, 12,000 families. Um, and so also just to add to this so that you understand that this is also a really big senior and retiree issue is AARP um, actually um, released a report early last May um, at, you know, citing that 50% of people who have lost their homes to foreclosure were over the age of 55. Um, so you can imagine this is a massive senior issue. We have seniors that are losing their homes to like the top three banks that um, that Spurs has investments in, and so we are urging you to you know consider the resolution that we put in front of you. It's been three months. Um, you know this crisis has been around for seven years, and every minute that you know any institution is unable to act to do anything to put pressure on these banks to be socially responsible and to address a lot of the discriminatory illegal issues that have occurred, the more people lose their homes. Thank you. Mention that you gave him the report. Yeah.